G.I. Joe fans, Joe Motion Videos 82 here. It is time for another G.I. Joe toy review. Today, we're going back to 1987. This is the time when uh, Hasbro started getting weird with G.I. Joe. I mean, the, the first really brightly colored action figure we saw was in 1986 and that was with sci-fi I mean, lime green he was the laser trooper that uh, took the place of flash and uh i really think they named him sci-fi for a few reasons one because he was a laser trooper two he looked like robocop and three that lime green uniform he wore so they started experimenting well, we get up into 1987, and what do we get? We get Voltar, Crocmaster, Big Boa, uh, Crystal Ball, we get the Buzz Boar. It, it was getting pretty interesting. Um, so they started kind of shying away from the military aspect. Yeah, I'm not saying any of those figures are, are bad, you know, there are a lot of fans out there of said action figures, and I am one of them. I love the weird action figures. <laughs> but it really starts shying away from the military aspect, and it, well, sadly, turned a lot of loyal G.I. Joe fans away. And the movie, which I do like, uh, was pretty much the, the final nail that... Uh, stopped a lot of collectors but um, I kept on trudging along you know I love the sci-fi aspect of G.I. Joe but we are looking at one of the military style action figures today it is Tunnel Rat version 1 oh good old Tunnel Rat um, he was released in 87, as I had aforementioned, uh, as a part of the 6th series. Uh, he was on the shelves for two years. That's still when they were running those the figures for two years. So that made these guys readily available. And they're still readily available. So when we get to Byron's Gripes, we'll find out just how available. I had four pages of Tunnel Rat stuff. And I condensed it all down. But um, he was sculpted to look like Larry Hama. They did that with a few of their action figures. Um, Cross Country is one of them. Look, was sculpted to look like another employee of, um, of Hasbro. I think he looks like my old Scoutmaster. Uh, just watch that video. I do make that um, uh, remark. Uh, Ray Quist was his name. He looks very much like him. But uh, Tunnel Rat. There's a few card variants that came that he came with. Uh, one was for the the fridge promo. Uh, that's when. Uh, Refrigerator uh, Perry was uh, very active in sports. Um, he, he was playing with the Chicago Bears. They named him the Fridge because he was just a huge guy. Uh, so he's one of the... Uh, what word am I groping for? Uh, one of the celebrities along with Sergeant Slaughter, that they made an action figure for. And I think that was pretty cool that they did that for both of those guys. But uh, there's another variant on that card. It's for the Battle Ribbon. So um, let me pull those pictures up for you. Try to pause the camera. I gotta learn how to do this better. Okay. Oh, sorry. I didn't tighten the 
handle very well on my uh, tripod. My apologies. But uh, the battle ribbons, I don't recall ever seeing. I think I would have bought an action figure with those because those battle ribbons are pretty cool and they're very hard to find these days. Uh, but his original retail price is $2.69. Uh, very good deal at this at that time. Uh, so if you were a kid, pardon me, I'm trying to put my notebook down. Uh, if you were a kid, that was you know, just a few a few dollars. Uh, for pocket money. So if I wanted to buy a G.I. Joe, I went and model, uh, mowed somebody's lawn or went out and collected cans sometime. Well, that took a lot longer to get money, but um, it was worth it. Was cleaning up the environment and making money at the same time. And back then you could, at least out here in Arizona, you could, if you found a 16 ounce bottle, you could recycle them. Well, that was, it's the same everywhere else in the United States, but out here they don't do that anymore. There's no uh, deposit return on those bottles. Um, that's, that's unfortunate, but we're not using those bottles out here. It's all cans and plastic, but, um, other states, I was really surprised to see that they're still doing that. So anyway, I digress. Those battle rib ribbons were beautiful. Uh, different ones so you could put them on your shirt or whatever if you had a little camo jacket and look like you had you went on different campaigns it, it's really neat uh, very cool idea uh, and of course the fridge promo I never had the fridge um, John didn't have the fridge either uh, so that um, he was gone by the time the fridge came out. But I do have some memories of Tunnel Rat, of Clint Seidel. I had briefly mentioned him uh, in my last video. Um, Camcorder Nonsense asked, was it Clint Walker? I was like, no, it's not Clint Walker, <laughs> the the actor. Um, you know, his name was Clint Seidel, uh, real, real heavy into G.I. Joe. Uh, so had a slumber party at his house for his birthday, and um, Clint and I were playing with his his GI Joes along with the guy um, Warren Stone, is his name. But he had he had Tunnel Rat. And I remember he specifically said, "Don't take the flashlights out of his backpack. They're hard to if you drop them, they're hard to find." So I didn't do that with his flashlights. Um, and yes, they are very hard to find, and that's what makes this va this figure so expensive, or those stupid little flashlights. So, um, that was my, my first exposure to Tunnel Rat. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at him. Really cool action figure in general. Alright, here he is, Tunnel Rat. So let's go ahead and take his accessories off and take a look at those. First and foremost, he comes with this huge backpack. Uh, he is a combat engineer. I'll get to that when I read his um, file card. Uh, he has several pouches on here. He has a tarp or a bedroll rolled up there. Uh, this is a looks like a, a metallic frame backpack. But on the back here, he has two identical flashlights. These are too big to fit into his hands. Uh, he wasn't the only one that came out with flashlights that year. Uh, the Outback came with a flashlight. I'm not talking about the restaurant. So they plug right into the top of the backpack here. Uh, I do have a spare one. I do not know where it's at at the moment. Uh, so I might, if I ever find it, I'll turn around and sell that one. I had had it on my tactical battle platform, so it might still be inside of it. But yeah, there is his. This is a, a clunky backpack. I I actually like that one. Not something he would wear in a tunnel, of course. The next one is a satchel charge. You can see it has TNT written on it. This 
it comes on this little strap it might have a harder plastic so you might find some of these straps that are broken but a satchel charge you just pull a fuse and that'll uh, pull just tug on the fuse and that'll ignite it and it has a slow burn fuse so you can just throw it in and there's some with quicker fuses but um, since he's a combat engineer his job was to clear the tunnels and then drop tnt on them or satchel charges and blow them up and collapse them the next weapon he comes with if i could get it out of his hand safely is his rifle this clearly looks like a sniper rifle in a lot of sense uh, it has a bipod sculpted sculpted onto the bottom uh, he has this along here this is a a ribbed um, barrel uh, this helps cool the barrel down a barrel shroud or whatever they call them uh, flash suppressor here on the front this huge night vision scope and this looks like a modified m60 in a way uh, the grip on it is very long so it's an m60 sniper rifle very unique looking rifle now looking at tunnel rat oh you can see he does have <clears throat> that um, Asian look to him you know, because he was designed after Larry Hama so this is a machine gun because he does have the belt the bandolier of bullets uh, the silver on these do rub off you could see or does rub off I should say you could see it's starting to on his back he has a silver pistol sculpted onto his chest and a smoke grenade He's wearing a gray do rag with uh, gray flecks of camo on him and a uh, second Joe to come out with a um, bandana around their neck. Falcon was the other one. And I like how they threw a gray belt in there to kind of break up the black. It's a gray web belt, silver buckle. He has a bayonet on his leg again with a little bit of black on there to break it up uh, that's colored brown he's wearing black pants and brown boots those don't really look like combat boots do they no and also a green watch there on his wrist pretty cool I like when they add gloves to the action figure and I forgot to mention I can't read those small that small writing there but he has a unit patch on his sleeves nice looking action figure all in general very nice okay so tunnel rat very neat action figure um, as mentioned that the tunnel rats were um, a special engineering unit that was highly utilized in the Vietnam War. Uh, in World War II, they, they had to face tunnels uh, from the Japanese Army, um, but I don't think they specifically had a tunnel rat unit. This, I don't think they were expecting those tunnels. But the North Vietnamese Army and the Viet Cong had miles and miles of tunnels dug all over. And they got to be pretty elaborate. They had living quarters in there. They had hospitals. They had munitions dumps. And they were laden with traps. So that's why they had to have a combat engineer. He had to be a smaller guy to fit into those tunnels. Me, um, being my size, uh, six foot six, you see my shoulders are very broad. I would have a very hard time navigating those. Uh, so you had to be, you know, I can't remember the exact height requirements, but five feet 
or a little bit taller. You need a, a tiny dude to get in there. Uh, they, I just recently watched a video on um, tunnel tunnel rats, so that's why I chose him. He's the memory, the information's still fresh, but um, the Vietnamese had water uh, little kind of moats, you know, just in a little square hole. Um, they were water traps. Uh, so that actually, well, for one, made it uncomfortable for the person going through. I'm sure they put bungee sticks in the bottom of them. But uh, that helped prevent uh, any smoke from getting into their living quarters because we... We would throw smoke uh, grenades in there and choke them out. But those water basin things, it would go down and then the tunnel would go up. So it would hit that and, you know, they couldn't get water. Water locks, that's what I was thinking of. They had water locks in there. And that would help prevent the smoke from going in. So you needed the tunnel rats had to be engineers because they had to go in not only set their own bombs and charges they had to defuse them as well and around every corner um, they had a potential of running into somebody so they just went in with a pistol flashlight and a knife and that was it so let me read his file card <coughs> pardon me uh, I unfortunately don't have his file card, but it reads Codename Tunnel Rat EOD for Explosives Ordnance Disposal. Um, his file name is Lee Nicky. Um, serial number 36784-9090, Primary Military Specialty EOD. Uh, secondary Military Specialty Combat Engineer. He's from Brooklyn, New York. Grade E5. He's a sergeant. Uh, second paragraph reads, Tunnel Rat's family tree um, is Trinidadian Chinese with branches of Irish, Spanish, and Indian thrown in. He grew up mean on the streets of Brooklyn, got tough on the, the ranger course at Fort Benning, that's in Georgia, Fort Benning, Georgia, and honed his skills in Grenada. This is pretty faded, so it's hard to read, but um, so he's special forces. Um, Grenada is a small island in the Caribbean that, if I could remember right, uh, there's a medical school down there, an American medical school, and Cuba tried to, well, Cuba did invade, and they took over the island, and um, President Reagan sent the Marines in, and uh, they liberated the island and the school. A uh, good movie was made about that called Heartbreak Ridge with Clint Eastwood, so check that movie out. So continuing, he is a qualified expert uh, with all NATO small arms and familiar with Warsaw Pact explosives. So every Joe is familiar with NATO and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So they're familiar with all NATO approved guns. This G.I. Joe are special forces, right? Okay, bottom reads with a quote, Tunnel Rat believes that anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. His feeling about crawling into as many um, tunnel with a knife in one hand, a pistol in the other, and a flashlight in his mouth is simple. Um, he can uh, shoot straight, the straighter, hit harder, and run further than um, anything. This is very blurry. He's ever. Uh, encountered in a tunnel as why worry um, so I got that off of yojo.com but his 
the fact that he's small and fast, that I'm sure helped him out. Um, of course, every Joe is bigger and better at everything they do than your average person, or they wouldn't make the Joe team, right? So, yeah, there's Tunnel Rat, guys. Uh, let me know what you think. Do you have him? Did you have him? Uh, just a really cool action figure in general. Um, I'm happy to finally have him. Uh, won him in an auction, so it was fairly cheap. Um, with these more popular figures, I try to get them in an auction. That way, they are. Um, I could hopefully get them cheaper, unless they have an or better offer, then I'll negotiate a little bit. But with him, I definitely set a budget, and if the auction went above a certain price, I didn't. I just backed out. So here we go. My favorite segment, <clears throat> Byron's Rice. If you're just joining me, uh, thanks to my new subscribers, my count went up by three. Thank you guys very, very much. If I, if your channel is um, published or if it's um, made known to the public, I, I subscribe back to you. If it's not, I can't see who subscribed. So... I sorry I can't return a favor because I can't see your your channel, and that's fine. I I completely respect and and an anonymity, and a an, an, uh, that one. You being anonymous, I can never say that word. <laughs> but anyway, oh, if you're looking for this guy, um, he's out there. Like I said, I found four pages worth of stuff. Uh, I use eBay for the mere convenience. There are several other sites that sell action figures. Uh, I just use eBay for the mere convenience of it. And I'm not doing this to pick on eBay or its sellers. I just want you guys to know what the prices are, what to expect when you go in. That way you're not surprised. And I'll tell you what I think is a good price and what isn't. Um, everybody's budget is different. So, this, me being a tightwad, if it's a good price, I you know, I can't say, yeah, that's a good price. It's up to you. But, um, I refer to myself as a tightwad because I'm more generous with other people than I am with myself. So, <laughs> it's just a little selfish to be, well, I'm getting it all for me. No, I just, I outgrew that. So, anyway, so if you're wanting him just by himself, $11.99, and you could buy the accessories, but watch the shipping on this, because shipping will definitely put you into a higher um, price bracket, and you just might as well buy them complete with the way shipping is anymore. Uh, alone, $11.99. Excellent deal on that one, deal of the day, um, all the way up to 25 bucks. And uh, no, he's he's a great figure, but there's a lot of them out there, and $25 for that one, but being you know just, just by himself, no. If he came with a few accessories, yes. So that's a little expensive, but the seller does have an or better offer on there, so you can negotiate that price down. Uh, there is somebody out there reproducing the flashlights now. Uh, sometimes that's the, the better way to go. They're a little lighter green than um, what um, Hasbro made. And you can tell that they're repros. So if you're not um, somebody that has to have everything original, the repro flashlights to display the figure looks good. Um, I have a repro with... Um, Outback. So when I review him, I'll make sure I point that out. But the flashlights are $3.99 each. Uh, that comes from the seller Blues Gunsman. Very good guy. I've been working with him for a while now, and you always get a, a straight deal with him. Um, incomplete, meaning he comes with a few accessories. 11 bucks again, deal of the day. Um, all the way up to $25.45. So... Yeah, I would pay twenty five forty five because he does come with a few extra accessories, and that's saving me money actually. Um, so one without any accessories for twenty five bucks, no. Like I said, 
but complete with the file card 4149 uh complete that's actually with his given price that's not too terribly bad not a deal of the day but it's not bad all the way up to $175 and that guy must have found that one on the top of Mount Everest to charge that kind of a price that is just nuts his satchel $7.99 to $19.99 those are the only two I found right now for sale $7.99 I would do because that looks like an accessory that wasn't played with much I know I didn't play with like the binoculars and satchels that came with these figures I just didn't oh uh, so $7.99 is a very decent deal on that $19.99 no again that is just asking way too much it's just being greedy complete no file card thirty dollars fifty cents again deal of the day all the way up to fifty five dollars there's another one for forty dollars uh forty yeah that's like on the high end of what i would pay if i just absolutely had to have him but 55 is just asking way too much. His flashlights. Okay, here we go, guys. Hold on to your knickers on this one. Um, this is... This is nuts. And this is why I buy Repro flashlights. Um, seriously, this I, I don't like this. This upsets me. $16.99 to $29.99 for those flashlights. Granted, they're small. They got lost easily. Supply and demand comes into play, that economic theory. But this is what makes collecting hard for a lot of people. And that upsets me. Especially with kids who are wanting to take up their parents' hobby and collect these toys. It's making it very hard for them, and that really stinks. I don't like that. So his gun, three ninety-five deal of the day, up to twelve dollars sixteen cents. Again, that is just insane. There is one for six ninety-nine, one for eleven dollars. So the price just keeps on going higher and higher the further down the list you get. His file card, $4.25 to $4.80. Deal of the day on both of those. Those are great prices for this file card, for this action figure being that inexpensive. Now, uh, his backpack. Okay, this is a huge backpack. And that was what page four was from. Page three and four. Sorry, I take that back. They were all backpacks they go from a dollar to two dollars fifty cents that is average actually a dollar is a little below average for this backpack there are a lot of them out there how could you lose this thing i mean it's the size of a jawbreaker how could you buddy lose this it is huge Lady J's backpack, Grunt, Short Fuse, you know, the smaller ones, those were kind of easy to lose, especially in the backyard and the grass. I didn't have grass in my backyard. Just dirt. Oh, his backpack with with both of the flashlights. Um, I only found one. It's $32.99. A little more expensive than the action figure, but you're paying for the flashlights and getting the backpack free. That's how I see it. Um, especially with an individual flashlight being 30 bucks or up to $30. So, yeah, I'm going to put that with a deal of the day. I mean, that's a, a chunk of change to be spending on an accessory, but if you break it down, you're saving a lot of money. So if you have everything else but the flashlights, buy the lights, but if you need it all, just buy the backpack, bite the bullet. You know, because these aren't getting any cheaper. And I don't know when the, the collector's dome that's building over this is going to burst. As 
right now anything vintage is hot anything so we're going to be looking at this for a while i've been doing this for almost five years and the prices are just getting higher so mint on card uh three dollars 98 cents or no geez that would be nice huh i take that back 398 dollars up to five dollars a lot of this stuff is going up for auction for tunnel rats so you might want to try the auction i don't quote those prices because they are fluid they just keep on going up so i won't quote an auction very often uh, incomplete with the file card 34.99 to 66 bucks that is nuts I just would not do that unless I had the accessory that he was missing then I would buy it and save money but no the full card back 14.99 not too bad uh, 1625 one for 22 and the other for thirty dollars 37 cents thirty dollars for a full card back no I think that one was found under the the throne in England on top of the underneath the stone of destiny it's the only way he could have charged that much. He had to have found it under there. But anyway, there we go, guys. Sorry, it's a little verbose on this, but um, you know me. I like to tell stories. Uh, definitely check this guy out if you don't have him. Um, I would uh, try my local vintage toy store if you have one in your area or one close by your house. Uh, to get him first you're pretty much guaranteed a cheaper price uh, a lot of times those guys will work with you a little bit on the price but um, yeah buying them online I mean that it, it makes me sick it does so anyway, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. Big thanks to my channel supporters, uh, and especially to you who are just subscribing. So what do you need to do to become a channel supporter? Uh, well, uh, you could uh, either collaborate with me on a video, uh, send uh, post pictures online uh, on social media, or send me a picture and I, I could add it into my video intro that helps the channel um, or send something in to to the the channel to you know uh, for me to review um, that'll put you up with the, the channel supporters um, and that actually does it really helps because that frees up some money for me to purchase things for giveaways and yes i do hold giveaways and um, i do give away great prizes these are things i would not keep for myself or that i would keep for myself um, so i make sure that they they are very decent before i i give them away so i am holding a giveaway when i reach 500 uh, the channel supporters and every all the subscribers there's two separate giveaways for the channel supporters i'm giving away a dealer destro uh, from the classified series a six inch destro and for the subscribers i'll be giving away one of these snake eyes um, the retro snake eyes and a um, python patrol asp so uh, I reviewed that just here recently, so if you want to see what that looks like, go ahead and check it out. And check out the 500 sus subscriber announcement, and you get to see what those prices are. So, anyway, I'll let you guys go. Uh, remember, please be kind to everyone, uh, especially right now. Things are getting even worse than last year with um, covid uh, holidays are coming up. People are going to be a little more grumpy because they can't go and visit family. Completely understandable. But please, guys, wear your masks. 
COVID is not a joke. It's very real. Wash your hands. That's your first line of defense. It's hand washing. Try not to touch your face with dirty hands because this is your danger zone. It is called the danger triangle. Your eyes down to your mouth. This will get everything. You could absorb stuff through your eyes. So, the <laughs> I can't do it, but the triangle, I think the danger triangle, it's where a lot of infection gets into our bodies through our eyes, nose, and mouth. So, um, you don't necessarily have to worry about too much about it getting into your eyes in public because a lot of people are wearing their masks. Um, healthcare providers, we wear goggles, um, but you can still inhale it through your nose and mouth. So, when you wear a mask, cover your nose and your mouth, okay? Okay. Uh, I'll make a video showing you how to appropriately wear a mask. So please, it's not a joke, guys. Keep your six feet distance. That's the minimum safe distance. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. Safety sanitize six feet. The triple S. Uh, remember, always be kind to animals as well. They know nothing but unconditional love. Until then, we'll see you. Uh, Wednesday, so I'm working next Tuesday. I'll see you on Wednesday for a review. And on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, I will be reading to you a Christmas carol. My dad's favorite Christmas story. And I think America is where everybody's favorite Christmas story, uh, written by Charles Dickens. So, we'll talk to you guys later. This is Joe Motion Videos 82, signing off.